Hey everybody, it's Sherry Tomlinson with the Quality Assurance and Compliance team. Thanks so much for joining me for another Right Way Wednesday video. Today I just wanted to talk a few documentation tips, um, just some things I'm seeing out in the field. I'm certainly not going to touch on everything because I don't want to keep you guys here for too, too long. Um, but as I'm doing audits when I'm out in the sites or remotely, there's just some habits or trends that I'm seeing out there and I just wanted to kind of bring, every, bring it to everybody's attention and just remind you of some things to think about as you're completing your documentation in the EMR. Um, and I just wanted to touch on a, one or two areas in a couple of uh, the documents, so um, I'll try to make this concise. In the evaluations, the reason for referral, try to avoid clicking on any prefabricated phrases or sentences that the EMR may have available to you um, because we want to make sure that our documentation, that's sort of the point of this whole video, we want to make sure that our documentation is specific to each individual patient that we evaluate or treat. If we use too many or consistently use the options that are available that are already sort of written out for us in the EMR, then our documentation starts to look cloned and looks the same for every patient. So with the reason for referral, I see people using the one that says, um, patient demonstrates increased need for assistance from others. Well, that probably could apply to almost every patient that we evaluate. So instead, be narrative and specific to what happened to this patient that caused the physician to give orders for you to evaluate them and treat, if indicated. Um, what happened to them that they went to the hospital? Uh, if they're long-term care, they live in assisted living or independent living, like who noticed a change in function for this patient that caused them to get, give you orders? So again, try to avoid generic, vague, phrases and be very as specific as you possibly can be. In the clinical impressions or the reason for skilled therapy services section, depending on what your EMR calls that area, that's where the reviewer is looking for a summary, a clinical summary of what you found after you evaluated the patient. So again, we shouldn't just be clicking on very vague phrases or sentences we want to provide some type of detail as to, I completed my evaluation and here's what I found to be wrong with them and characterize those deficits. So um, if we say that somebody has mild to moderate oropharyngeal dysphagia, what is it that caused you to come to that conclusion? Be specific. Were they pocketing after the swallow? Were they, what was their um, AP transit? Were they coughing during or after the swallow? What's the status of their swallow onset? So again, we would say patient has, um, demonstrates mild to moderate oropharyngeal dysphagia characterized by, and we would use some of the things that we found um, as we assessed the patient today. Um, looking at the progress reports, a common area that I find um, that that therapists tend to only click on those build phrases would be the clinical, um, like the prog progress and response to treatment section or the progress short-term goal section, depending on your EMR, um, what they call that area. But this really needs to be where you're summarizing the specific progress that the patient is demonstrating towards their plan of care goals. And we need to make sure we're including, we're kind of taking that one step further and we're including the functional components to that. So not just reiterating what you put up in the goal status as far as their mod assist, min assist, um, supervision for whatever that goal measurement is, but instead taking it one step further and including functionally how, that's, how that impacts this resident or what it's moving them towards being able to do so that you're helping um, under, helping the reviewer understand why this is important and beneficial and supporting that ongoing medical necessity. Um, the most common uh, phrase that I see being used out there in one of the EMRs is that we use just a blanket statement that says, patient's functional performance is improving as a result of skilled treatment. Again, that doesn't tell us anything specific, so make sure that you are detailing the gains the patient is making. 
And then on the discharge summaries, there is always a similar area in the EMR where we're looking for a clinical summary of why was this episode of care or this therapy plan of care overall beneficial to this patient. Um, I see a lot of people saying patient has reached max potential with skilled services and patient made consistent progress throughout plan of treatment. That's another one that I see being used. We should never have just one sentence in this area. We really should be documenting at least a small paragraph. On the discharge summary, there is always a section where we're looking for a clinical summary of what were all of the gains that the patient made over the entire plan of care and therefore why was that beneficial to this particular patient. So it might be a section called progress and response to treatment again or it could be called skilled services provided since start of care. But no matter what the section is called, that's what we're looking for, is for some type of a clinical assessment summary that really demonstrates the gains that the patient achieved throughout the entire episode of care. What I'm frequently seeing people use is something that says patient has reached max potential with skilled services or patient made consistent progress throughout the plan of treatment. Again, that is very vague, it's very generic, and it does not help us understand why therapy was benefit for this pa beneficial to this patient. So just make sure that you're being specific. On the discharge summary, tell us why you're discharging the patient. Again, summarize the gains that they made with each of the plan of care goals and highlight why those, ben those gains were functionally beneficial to the patient. Talk about kind of finalized training that's been provided to the patient or someone that's going to be helping them with their care post-discharge and then make sure that you're highlighting any recommendations that you have for them um, regarding their post-discharge recommendations. So do you recommend home health? Do you recommend outpatient? Do you recommend that they keep up with their home exercise program? And if so, how many times a week do you want them to do that home exercise program in order to maintain the status that you helped them achieve? Hope that's been helpful. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to your regional quality assurance lead. And I hope you guys have a great Wednesday. Thanks.